Hello there and welcome to MCI Studio with me, Pippin Henderson. Today we are talking about mastering. It's a tutorial that you've been waiting for, I do apologise for this, but here we go. Mastering is something that may take a while to explain. This may be a long tutorial and I do warn you there's going to be a lot of talking in this, so if you get bored easily, um, this may not be the tutorial for you, but I am trying to cater for those who uh, are completely new to this. All my tutorials so far have been based around a basic theme uh, of tutorials, getting those who are really aren't familiar with any of this familiar. So if you are familiar with mastering or anything like that, this may not be the one for you. However, there may be, may be some bits and pieces in here that you uh, that you may find interesting. So I, I apologize if you find it boring, but for those of you who are completely new to it, uh, I'm afraid there's going to be a little bit of talking involved and um, not as many, not as much hands-on um, stuff as, as you may be fully, um, familiar with with my uh, previous tutorials. Uh, and this is mainly due to the fact that mastering is more of a fine-tuning process rather than uh, major tweaks. All the heavy uh, changes should have all been done in the mixing process. What we're focusing on now is really fine tuning this piece of music and getting it ready for what's known as mass production. And that's basically uh, getting your song ready to be played uh, in a variety of, of places, whether it be a, a nightclub, uh, you know, an iPod or a car stereo. Your song has to sound its best in all those different places and all those different uh, types of speakers. It can't sound too bassy and it can't sound too trebly. It has to sound perfect on everything. So uh, a good ear is um, is key to mastering. So if you find it difficult to pick up subtle changes within uh, audio, you may find uh, mastering to be a bit of a challenge. Not impossible, but certainly more difficult than someone who's used to it. There are a few tools uh, well, I say a few. There's quite a lot of tools available to you uh, within Sonar that will deal with the mastering. Uh, and another, th another thing that I, I need to really stress here, uh, the, the kind of mastering we are talking about here is purely digital. I am not using or, or going to be talking about any kind of other uh, mastering techniques that you may find in bigger studios. This is straight out of the box what you get within Sonar. So anything you see or hear in this tutorial is taken completely out of um, Sonar X1 Producer and nothing else, okay? So uh, I'm using only the tools available to you through Sonar. When you get into mastering, there, there, it's such an in-depth process, or at least it can be, that there are many different ways to master a, a single track. Okay, so here we go. Okay, what the, the setup we've got here is a song, one of my own, and I think I used this in the last tutorial. And what I'm going to do basically is play you a a stretch of this song, just leading into the chorus and to the end of the chorus. And I'm going to play this section without mastering effects on. And I'm going to play exactly the same piece with these mastering effects on. And I want you to really pay attention and really listen to what differences you can hear within the sound. One thing to uh, bear in mind is that this song is not finished and therefore um, I only had literally have two pieces of um, effects here that are, uh, that are doing the mastering. We have the uh, the vintage channel, the VC64 and the uh, the LP64, the multiband. Those are the only two effects that I have on and this is due to the fact, this is just basically just the way that I work when I'm, when I'm making music is I will kind of build half a song and then halfway through, I will quickly mix and balance the tracks. And then I'll throw in a couple of mastering effects just to give me an idea of where we're going and what it's going to sound like at the end. And I can make any kind of subtle changes that I need to. So, and this is hope. So, this is basically with two pieces of uh, mastering effects on, and that's it. Uh, and the only other effects that I have on are the individual track, uh, track effects. So, have a listen. I'm going to switch these off now. Ignore this equaliser. If you're wondering what that is, ignore that. That's simply to level this so it's not too loud for you guys in the recording. Um, so ignore that. Okay, so I've turned off the mastering effects. Take a listen to this uh, piece now, and then we'll stop it, and then we'll turn the uh, mastering effects on. Freedom. 
Okay, and this is with. If you found it difficult to um, tell the difference there, what I'm going to do now is turn them off and then play the track and then halfway through I'm going to switch them on as it's playing so you could kind of, well hopefully you'll be able to hear the, the, uh, the difference uh, or the jump between the effects more. So here we go. Okay, hopefully you found that uh, a little easier to, to spot the difference. And what I want you to do basically now is to, if you can, jot down any differences that you heard there. If you need to listen to it again, just rewind and, uh, and have a listen again. Jot down any differences or write down any differences that you heard in the sound there, what was added and what was being taken away. And making notes like that is really going to help. Uh, adjust your own track and your own music. When you start making notes like that, what you're doing is you're training your ears to hear subtle differences um, and changes within audio. The more that you that you listen and the, uh, the more you train your, your ears to, to pick up more and more uh, differences. So um, do do that often, uh, you know, even in your own work. Add some effects, then take them away. Do, do A-B tests jot down the differences that you can hear is there more bass being added is the treble being affected what's happening to the mid-range is it affecting the pan in any way those kind of things jot down some notes um, and you'll find that as you do it more and more you'll find it easier to hear the differences and mastering will become more of a uh, more of an enjoyable experience because at the beginning it's quite um it's quite difficult to understand what's going on and if you're not quite familiar with what's going on, it's difficult to make any changes because you're not aware of the change that you're making. So it is vital that you, you understand what you're adding and what you're taking away from this track because ultimately it's going to affect the final outcome because this really is the final stage and you have to get this bit right if it's going to sound, if it's going to sound good on uh, multiple devices. So, okay, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the effects that I've added here have a look at the vintage channel and the LP64 and briefly go over some um, some stuff you can do with them and how you can use these effects in your own project okay so the first thing that we have is the vintage channel and there's a few things going on with this effect and it's one of my favorite effects simply because it actually does a lot of the work for you without you having to make um, too many changes. You have a lot of presets here in the top left and there's, well I, I do actually recommend going through every single one of these and paying attention to the differences that, that they do for your track. Some of them are extremely dramatic and some of them are very subtle but it's worth taking note um, because they're good starting positions. What I tend to do is pick a preset and then alter it to adjust the the song that I'm working on they're really good places to start with actually starting actually you know, opening opening this up and tweaking it all from scratch um, can be a little daunting so it's good to have a, a starting position uh, my favorite is master mix and what that does is really boosts up those quiet areas of the mix and boosts those up with the rest of the uh, um, the loud, the louder parts of the mix, and kind of um, gives it a nice uh, overall uh, balanced feel, and that is due mainly to the compressor that comes with this, and it's a wonderful compressor. If you're not familiar with what compression does, um, there's no real easy way to explain compression, um, other than it um, boosts low frequencies 
up to the, the kind of mid range and it squashes the higher frequencies down to the mid range and kind of brings everything together uh, and what you'll find is you can you can set a threshold which basically means you set the area to which the sound will peak and it won't go any further than that so say for example let's just close this for a second let's go into this what we have here this on this uh, right side of this track here this is the peak indicator okay and a threshold is basically an area of this peak indicator where you can set the level of the audio to go to but will not go to uh, will not go past that area so say if I set the threshold to minus 12 DB the audio will not go past that area so once you've set your threshold you can then up the gain and what that will do then is bring the mix up in level but will still keep it at minus 12 because you've set that threshold so what you're doing is you're squishing together the low frequencies of the mix up towards minus 12 db and it's still keeping those loud frequencies at minus 12 so you're bringing those low those low frequencies up whilst keeping the loud frequencies at a, at a constant level so um, you're kind of squishing that audio together and what you'll end up hearing is the more that you push that effect um, you'll start hearing what's known as a wall of sound and it's it's what happens when audio is is squished together it, you know you can go over the top with with compression and it does sound real messy I can do a slight example of this now I'm going to play you the track and then I'm going to up these two gains here and I want you to want you to see if you can notice the song starting to get squished um, you'll really notice where that comp where that compression is happening so take a listen Hopefully you noticed what happened there uh, and what it's doing is basically it wasn't actually upping the level at all it wasn't making the song louder what it was doing is making the quieter bits of the song the same level as the louder bits of the song and it, it makes everything all one level um, and that's what basically what compression does it's basically think of it as a cardboard box and inside this cardboard box you have strips of paper and most of those strips of paper are inside this cardboard box but some of them are hanging out of the edge and, and it's a bit messy what compression basically does is take those bits that are hanging off the edge and throws them back into the cardboard box and puts everything in one place that's kind of um, the way that I, I try to explain it um, but hopefully the little demonstration we did there kind of um, kind of put it into perspective the trick and I'll be honest with you here, the trick to mastering really is all about compression and how much you use and where you use it. You'll notice sometimes on certain songs um, compression um, being put on um, almost every single track individually and then um, compression being put um, on the whole track.